Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out the CCG Toolkit, or Computerized Card Game Toolkit. This is a way of making card games like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering using the Unreal Game Engine. And why are we talking about this particular add-on right now? Well, the good reason is if you're watching this sometime in February of 2019, it is currently free. Uh, every month, Unreal or Epic Games have been making a bunch of Unreal Marketplace content completely free, and the top of this month's list was the CCG Toolkit. Now, I've had a lot of people um, ask me about creating tutorials to do computerized card games. I know there's a lot of interest in creating these kind of um, games, and this might be your single best entry point into creating those styles of games. So I decided to go ahead and feature it. Now, another very cool part about this is it is also exceedingly well documented. So this is the documentation that comes with it. And you can think of the CCG, to uh, CCG toolkit as two parts. One is it is a game creation framework. And what you could do is completely ignore all of the underlying code and basically just reskin things. Add your own cards, add your own behaviors, slightly change the programming behind the scenes, but for the most part, you're just kind of skinning and adding data and you're creating your own game as a result. And that's what CCG Toolkit provides. It's got a full top level editor for creating your own uh, layouts, boards, and then it shows you in this documentation how to go ahead and add cards, how to add abilities to your cards, and so on. So that's what most of this documentation is all about. This is for going through and creating uh, your own cards using the deck builder, um, saving the, your decks, running them on different arenas, uh, how AI works. And the cool thing is there is actually AI. So there's computer controlled uh, blueprint provided AI behind the scenes. So even if you just want to jump in here and see how their AI was implemented, that's always interesting. But you can come in here and see how to go ahead and create sets of cards, individual cards, and kind of skin the game to create your own card game on top of it. But when you're ready to go ahead and grab this guy, what you do is come on in here to the Epic Game Launcher, especially if it is, again, currently still, um, February of 2019, it's completely free, but you come in here, you go to search for CCG in the marketplace, you will find CCG Toolkit, and then what you're gonna wanna do is add it to cart. Now you notice I've already done that because I am at own stage, but what you can do is basically uh, add to cart and then buy it and you're done. Now you don't have to buy it, there's no money involved. Uh, you basically just buy it for free, but you do have to purchase it before it's available to you. Once you have purchased it, you'll be able to come into your library. It is there under CCG Toolkit and simply just do create a project and it will create a project for you and you're off to the races. Now I gotta warn you, this create project process for both the 2D, um, the 2D Toolkit that was also part of this, this guy right here, Platformer 2D Toolkit, and the CG Toolkit, both of those, it, there seems to be a bit of a bug here. When you first create your project, for some reason, it seems to hang at 45%. Don't worry about that, just give it a lot of time, it will eventually create. Uh, loading Unreal Engine projects for the first time has always been a bit of a pig anyways, uh, but give this guy 15, 20 minutes for it to load. And seriously, it could take that long. I don't know what's going on, and subsequent loads don't take that much time, but your first initial load when you hit Create Project, if it takes a long time, don't be surprised. Surprised. And then once you're done here, this is the actual game running. So when you first load up into uh, Unreal Engine, it looks like this. There's not a whole lot of um, stuff happening because most of the actual game is composed dynamically when it's run. Uh, we're just going to go ahead here and click play, and we're actually pretty much playing a version of our game. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a full deck builder here. So you've got your basic set, debug set, an empty set. I could go ahead and create a new deck. And then we basically, once we've created the new deck, we just start adding cards to it. So we've got three and three and three and three, and we go to a different page. So as we've got different cards, we add them to our deck. We can save our deck as something. I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel out of that because I'm fine with their default deck for this example. And then you can go ahead and play. The cool thing with this also example is it's got full uh, networking uh, demonstrated as well. So you can uh, client server, you can join someone else's game. I'm gonna go ahead and create a game. I'll use this deck right here. And then you've also got your various different layouts here. These are your uh, arena setups. So you could have like a left and right orientation, a vertical orientation. Um, you got the ability to create these of your own as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll do Eagle's Nest in this case. And here you go. It's got a layout kind of like uh, Blackjack actually. Uh, each layer has been a little bit different and go ahead and create an AI opponent or you can play this multiplayer if you wish. And then you come in and as you see, it is your typical card game. You can control how the cards are laid out, how the boards are laid out, etc. Uh, up here, we can just open up the editor. Uh, I'd have to expand it to show you the full set of options here, but we've got things here like how, how to lay out the cards in your hand. Uh, you can control how this um, board is set. You've got card tools over here for 
um, changing card sets and um, selecting cards to add to sets. You can toggle the UI on and off and I'm just gonna go ahead and get out of there. So you can do a lot of the customization right there. And then when you wanna get in behind the scenes and start changing things, you can do that as well. Now the cool thing is, if you just wanna skin the game, you're fully documented over here. You're not gonna to have to get into much programming. Um, I'll show you the process of adding a card, for example, in this, this video right here. So head on back over here. If you wanna add, add a card under content, you will find CCG Toolkit, go to Card Game, Go to card sets and you could create your own set so if you were making like i don't know legends you could create a folder here called legends and then you can basically clone what the basic set does so you've got here like special effects materials and textures used for cards so you see the various different pieces that go together in the card like the frame right here um that's the uh the texture set but what you're mostly going to do is come in here to this actual data set so this data table open that up and it is a collection of all of the cards in that particular set so for example here we've got the angry dwarf or the angry turtle, I'll go with the angry turtle. All of the properties or traits of it are here. So you've got different warrior classes. It could be various different things. And of course you can define all of these things yourself. You can change the rarity of the card. And then where you're normally gonna come in is attributes or abilities, sorry. So you can add various different abilities to cards. You can add multiple abilities. So in this case, this guy has an increased attack ability, but we could also come in here and do retaliation damage like thorns. You can do things, increase turn points, discard cards in hand, all the stuff that you would have, you know, to tap the card to perform this action, they can all be, hooked up using abilities and again I could add a new ability by clicking here you see also the data table also has entries for the visuals uh, if I scroll on down here we should be able to see that Is it right here in card system uh, nope all right, I'm not sure where the graphic detail, oh, it's probably here under visual. Yeah, that would make sense. So see here, here's how you would hook up the various different pieces to your card. So you got your frame, your front image, your uh, graphic itself. So if you were creating your own card, really you'd only have to modify this particular piece right here for your different graphic um, and everything else is provided for you. So you, if you were creating art and adding new card sets, um, this is really the only piece you'd have to really change. You, otherwise you could do a lot of this just by cloning other entries. So that's how you go about creating your own cards. Now in terms of behind the scenes to this guy, there is a heap of um, blueprints connected here. We can come up here, go to blueprints and open a blueprint class. And here you can see these are the various different blueprints that are provided. And there's a ton of them. There's stuff here for the, the two different players, the networking, there's individual ones for the card. And if you go into the card blueprint, you'll find uh, it's got all of those properties we were just defining. So all the visuals and so on, the frame and all that stuff in part of the blueprint. So how are you gonna go about actually figuring out how this works? Well, the first places you can start is the level blueprint, the project settings blueprint, and the world override blueprint if they exist. So edit card game mode blueprint, you'll find a lot of the controlling logic will be in there. But what I suggest for actually learning your way around this guy is instead to come back here and actually run your game. So here we've got nothing going on. So you see over here, we've just got a camera and some sky and players and so on. But we go ahead and actually play it. So now we're launching the main menu, especially if you're new, if, if you're not new to Unreal Engine, none of this is gonna be news to you. But if you are new to Unreal Engine, the best way to figure out how things work is to literally just run your game. So the game is now running in this little window over here, but you'll notice over here, Everything that is in the scene, all the dynamic objects that are used here. So we've got game mode now, player controller, player state, game state. Well, they all have clickable links now, and that will actually drill down and into the blueprint controlling that particular, or the class controlling that particular um, item within the game world. So here we're gonna go ahead and we'll do a play and keep an eye on over here. So I'll create a game. I'll load this deck here. We'll do a doubles arena and I'll create an AI opponent. And as I'm doing all of these things, new objects are being added and removed from the world. So as those cards were added in, they were added to this world. So we've got the player board for player one, player two. Um, and then what you're gonna wanna do, so if you wanna figure out how, here's the graveyard. The graveyard is right there. If you wanna figure out how the graveyard works, go on here. This is your graveyard uh, blueprint. All of the stuff for constructing it, the collision box, the, the different, um, so here's the function for removing cards. So when a card is added to the graveyard, this is what will be invoked. And I, I highly suggest, and that's the nice thing with something like blueprints, it's very straightforward to um, dig into and, and parse what they're doing here because it's this flow chart style um, uh, coding system here. But the cool thing is literally just run your game and the objects that are running in your game are all here. So if you want to figure out how the game mode works, click there. You want to figure out how the player controller works, click there. 
there is your player controller. And the nice thing is everything is grouped and somewhat docked to show what each one of these actual things is doing. And I suggest you do that. Just basically run the code, uh, find the objects that are running that you wanna learn more about and digging into them. And if you're looking again for the whole top level controller stuff, your entry points, uh, those were generally going to be these special guys right there. So between those three guys right there and then anything that dynamically pops up, you should be able to drill down and figure out the logic behind uh, the scenes here. And then once again, some of the stuff is also documented here. So we get down into, um, say if you wanna add your own behavior, they go into, let me just find something. Yeah. See, we got a little bit, so here's how you define a new ability. And they walk you through the process of hooking that ability up and the, creating the blueprints for it. So I do highly recommend you start with the documentation. Start by creating your own data and then refining data, adding some new abilities, and then dig into the code behind the scenes when you get to that point. Because you could actually pretty much create a full game without changing any code beyond what's documented in here. And you could reskin this guy completely and have it as a completely different style of game without having to really <coughs> do any major coding, which is kind of a double-edged sword because of course we are going to see everyone's favorite, the asset flips as a result, because this is basically a card game making template inside of Unreal Engine. And it does make the process pretty easy. So all you really have to do is provide your own art. If you like their game logic, you could create a new game out of this with very, very little effort, for better or worse. But I know there's a lot of people out there that are interested in computerized card games, uh, have asked for tutorials in the past, and I honestly, I think this is about as good as I can provide. And once again, if it is still February, it is also free, and people like free. So if you're interested in checking out what the other free stuff is, I've also done a video of that. And again, it's only free until the end of February. So make sure that you add it to your cart and buy it before February of 2019 is up. Uh, once it's added to your cart and once you've purchased it, it is yours forever. But you only have the opportunity to get it for free uh, for the remainder of this month. So if you want it, grab it now, even if you're just going to use it later. That's what I've been doing. Every time they do one of these things, I just go in, add everything to my cart, purchase it, quote, and quote, purchase it, and I'm done. So these... This month's add, this month's add-ons were actually really cool. It's cool to see this card kit here. It's almost its own game engine in some ways. And there's also the 2D platformer kit. I don't know. Do you guys want to see me do a video on it as well? Let me know comments down below. Uh, let me know particularly any of this content that you want to see further details of. But again, I found the um, the CCG toolkit probably was the most interesting of them all. Um, so that's what I, I decided to do a focus on. But if there's something that you guys specifically want to see that I haven't covered yet, do let me know. I'll see if I can get to it. And what do you think of the CCG toolkit? I, I was actually really impressed. It, it, it has a lot of functionality and some pretty amazing documentation for creating that style of game. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.